Okay, so this is part two of the membrane transport discussion, and I'll be doing the back page on this part. So I have redrawn the problem uh, to give myself more room, but I will quickly explain what is going on. So we have a cell here with the lumen and the ECF labeled, and we need to build this cell using these four transporters to accomplish these goals. So we need to make a model of an epithelial cell that absorbs sodium and bicarb and secretes hydrogen. And then it gives us the concentration gradients for these ions here in the last column. So let's go over here to the drawing. And if you want to pause and draw this, you can. But to set up this problem, um, we are going to do two things. And the setup of this problem takes a little bit of time, but if you are consistent with your setup of these problems, then your chances of getting this problem wrong is very slim. So step one to setting up this problem is to draw your gradients everywhere. So using the chart, it tells us what the gradients are for each one. And when I say draw your gradients everywhere, there are three places you should be drawing each gradient. In the lumen, in the epithelial cell, and in the ECF. Now we learned in part one that the sodium gradient is always high outside of the cells, low inside. And the chart here on the problem says the gradient for sodium is the typical ICF versus ECF concentrations. So it's not actually telling you uh, where it's high, what it's actually saying is that you should know what sodium is. For hydrogen, it tells us that it is concentrated inside of the lumen. So if it only tells us where hydrogen is concentrated, that means hydrogen is low everywhere else. All right, and then the last one is bicarb. It says bicarb is concentrated inside of the cell, which again means it's low everywhere else. If it only tells you where it's high, that means it's low everywhere else. All right, so that's step one. Step two is to draw, draw your absorption and secretion so draw your absorption and secretion goals now what I mean by this is draw this column on your chart so we want to absorb and secrete certain things so we need to know which direction is absorption and which direction is secretion so in lecture, you learned that the ECF is considered inside of your body because the ECF is your blood and the lumen is considered outside because whatever is inside the lumen cannot be used for metabolism. This is considered outside of your body. So if we want to absorb something, we should bring it from the outside and move it to the inside. So absorption is going from left to right. This is absorb. And at the end of the absorption arrow, I'm going to put the two molecules that this question wants us to absorb, sodium and bicarb. Now, secretion is the exact opposite of this. If we want to secrete something, then we should move it from right to left. This is secrete. And at the end of that arrow, I'm going to put hydrogen. So these goals that you've drawn are probably the most important thing to you getting this question correct because the goals here at the end of the arrow will hold you accountable to what the question is actually asking. So if you put sodium and bicarb at the end of the absorption arrow, that means every single time you draw sodium and bicarb, it has to be shown to the right. It always has to be shown drawn to the right. So you should never draw sodium going this way. You should never do that. The same thing with bicarb. And that means that you need to show also, you actually need to complete this goal. You actually need to show sodium and bicarb getting in to the ECF. You need to actually show that. And on the other side of this, we actually need to show hydrogen entering the lumen. 
So we know that those things need to happen in this graph, but I'll erase this so we can start. So uh, we have these four transporters down here to complete those goals. And the tip that I'll give for you is that you can only use each transporter one time. So your final answer can only have four proteins drawn on it. Every transporter can only be used one time. But the strategy that I have for you to solve this problem actually uses each transporter twice. So the strategy that I have for you and that I'll do here today is to actually take each transporter, place it on both sides of the membrane or both sides of the cell and see which one matches our goals. Whichever one does not match our goal, we will erase. All right, also when you are uh, approaching these transporters, I recommend starting with anything that is facilitated diffusion. You'll know what's facilitated diffusion because it will start or it will have the words channel or carrier in them. So let's start with the sodium channel and let's draw it on both sides. So sodium channel on both sides. Let's look at the lumen side. If we were to draw sodium moving in, the reason why we're drawing it moving in is because we have to follow the laws of passive transport or diffusion. And we know that it can only move an ion down its concentration gradient. So on the lumen side, it's going from high to low, moving in. So let's look at the ECF side. This time, it still has to follow the laws of diffusion. And <clears throat> based on the gradient on the ECF side, it's going to be moving from high to low inside of the cell. Well, based on our goal of sodium absorption, we said that we should never draw sodium moving to the left. So the one that I will erase is the one on the ECF side. All right, and now we have used the sodium channel one time, so I will cross out that. After finishing facilitated diffusion, I recommend moving to anything that is primary active transport. And so the way you'll know what primary active transport is, is by knowing the definition of it anything that directly uses ATP hydrolysis for energy. So the one with ATP in the name. So again, I'm going to draw the ATP ACE on both sides of this cell and we'll see which one works. Now, the rules of primary active transport are that it will move everything against gradients. So on the lumen side, if we're gonna move sodium against the gradient, it's going to be moving outside of the cell into the lumen. And then we also know that a, pot a potassium will be here as well and that it will use ATP. So let's draw on the ECF side. Following the rules of primary active transport, we know that it will pump sodium against the gradient. And at the same time, it will move potassium against the gradient and also using ATP. So based on, again, our goal of sodium absorption, which one do you think we should erase? should be the lumen side that we erase because the lumen side showed sodium getting secreted but the ecf side shows sodium being absorbed so we have used the sodium potassium pump once all right the next thing that you'll do is approach any secondary active transport proteins you'll know which ones are secondary active transport because they will have the word co-transporter in the name now, co-transporter is an umbrella term. Uh, the more specific terms are antiport or symport. We don't tell you which one is which here, which means that you have the ability to make either of these co-transporters symports or antiports. Now, based on our goals, we can uh, predict which which they will be. Will they be a symport or an antiport? So let's look at the last one, the sodium bicarb co-transporter. And let's look at our goals. If we want sodium and bicarb to do the same thing, then I would expect this co-transporter to be a symport because symport moves in the same direction. Now, if we draw this on the lumen side, we will draw sodium going in and bicarb also going in. Let's look at the gradients here and let's look at what is happening. Sodium is moving down its gradient and bicarb is moving against its gradient. So 
bicarb is using the energy that sodium gives off to move against its gradient. So this is secondary active transport. All right, so let's draw it on the ECF side. We know we should be drawing all of these to the right because of our absorption goal. We said at the beginning we should never draw sodium and bicarb moving to the left. So that's why I'm deciding to draw them all to the right. All right, but let's look at the ECF side here. Let's look at what sodium is doing relative to its gradient. It's moving against. So let's look at bicarb. Relative to its gradient, it's moving down. So this time, bicarb is giving off the energy that allows sodium to piggyback through this transporter and move against sodium's gradient. Secondary active transport, bicarb is giving off the energy. So both of these transporters on the ECF and lumen side follow the rules of secondary active transport. But we know that we can only use one of these. The final answer has to only have one of those proteins. So I recommend maybe pausing the video and trying to decide which one to keep. Are you going to keep the one on the lumen side or are you going to keep the one on the ECF side? Okay, so if you have decided which one to erase, the one that you should have erased is the one on the lumen side. The reason why the one on the lumen side doesn't work uh, is because it doesn't actually complete this goal. So if you erased the ECF side and kept the lumen side, you're not actually completing this goal. Like I said at the beginning, you actually need to complete these goals. You need to show sodium and bicarb entering this space, the ECF. You need to show it entering the ECF. And if you kept it on the lumen side, you showed it getting into the cell, but you never showed it actually getting into the ECF. The cell is not the body. The ECF is inside of the body. Epithelial cell is just the lining in between the inside and the outside, but you haven't actually absorbed these molecules if you just get them into the epithelial cell. You need to actually show them entering the ECF. All right, so that one was probably the hardest part of this problem, but let's move on to the last one. Sodium hydrogen co-transporter. Based on our goals, I would expect this to be an antiport because we have opposite goals for sodium and hydrogen. So I'm just going to draw sodium and hydrogen on both sides and draw them as antiports. So I'm gonna draw sodium going in, hydrogen going out. So let's look at the lumen side. Sodium relative to its gradient is moving down. Hydrogen relative to its gradient is moving against. So sodium is giving off the energy that allows hydrogen to piggyback through this transporter, and this is secondary active transport. Follows the rules, that looks good. Let's look at the ECF side. If we draw sodium going out and hydrogen going in, let's look at the gradients. Sodium is moving from low to high, so it's gonna have trouble doing that. It needs a source of energy, but look at hydrogen. What is it doing relative to its gradient? And rather, does it have a gradient? Hydrogen actually does not have a gradient here. It's moving from low to low. So if sodium is moving against its gradient and hydrogen doesn't have a gradient, this transporter actually just doesn't work at all. It doesn't follow the rules of secondary active transport. That can't happen. So I'm going to erase it and what we are left with is the final answer. So we used each protein twice, once on each side, but we erased one side of it and we are left with all four proteins drawn one time and we have our answer. So I recommend definitely retrying this problem on your own starting from the setup. So after you draw your gradients and your goals, see if you can do this again. And if you run into questions, uh, my Q&A hours are going to be really good for answering those questions. The other thing I recommend doing is go back to the first part of this discussion and try to work this glucose problem again. See if this glucose transport makes more sense now that you know a little bit more about uh, just kind of like the setup of these problems, the gradients, the transporters, stuff like that.
All right, so I'm not gonna answer all these questions. They're gonna be pretty easy uh, for you to answer, but I will answer uh, number two. It says, given the sodium bicarb co-transporters on the ECF, we would think it's the symport because we wanted them to do the same thing. They had the same goal. Now, part B is the one that's a little bit tricky. It says, based on the info above, which one do you think is moving via secondary active transport? So look at this right here. What 2B is asking you is, which one is moving via secondary active transport? Is it sodium, is it bicarb, or is it both, or is it neither? So the way you answer this is to answer the one that is moving against its gradient, which in this case is sodium. So the one moving via secondary active transport is sodium because it's moving against its gradient, it would normally not want to do this. It's using the energy that bicarb is giving off to move against its gradient. So, so you don't really need to worry about number three, uh, but this was when Ian was talking in lecture about like you have a uh, big X and little Y and, and X uses the gradient of Y to go in. Um, but yeah, don't, don't really worry about number three here. All right, so that's it for the membrane transport discussion. Um, I will be uploading the osmolarity and tonicity discussion later this week, probably Wednesday or Thursday, so that you can get started on your homework.